Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently, we are in the 6th module of our Amazon Machine Learning course and this 6th module is all about machine learning models and some important concepts related to it. So in today's video, we are going to discuss what is meant by loss function. So loss function is one of those most important and fundamental concepts that we have to learn in machine learning. So in this video, let's try to understand what is meant by this loss function how we can calculate this loss function and what is the importance of loss function when it comes to machine learning. So this is the agenda for today's video. Before getting started, in case you are watching my videos for the first time, hi, in this YouTube channel, I am making a hands on machine learning course. And if you want to learn this course from the beginning, I'll give the link of my course playlist in the description of this video. You can check that out. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. So what is meant by this loss function? Loss function measures how far an estimated value is from its true value. So here we are taking two, uh, two values. Okay, so one is uh, one is the true value or the actual value, and the other one is estimated value. Let's say that we are using a machine learning model to predict the average blood sugar level in a person, and uh, let's consider that the value predicted by our model is 160, uh, you know, milligram. And let's say that the actual value, actual blood, uh, blood sugar level for that particular person is 160 milligram. Here the estimated value or the predicted value is uh, 140 milligram and the true value is 160 milligram. So there is a difference of 20 milligram and this error of 20 is called as the loss. Okay. And we are going to, uh, you know, find a function or a relation that, you know, calculate this particular loss value. So the main purpose is to find how much distance is there between the estimated values and the true values. So you can also consider this as the error made by our model. Okay. So now let's try to understand what is the importance or what is the use of this loss function. So loss function is helpful to determine which model performs better and which parameters are better. Let's say that there are two models. Let's say that there are, uh, you know, there is support vector machine and random forest uh, model. So in machine learning, we have uh, several kinds of model. So in this particular case, let's consider these two models, support vector machine and random forest. And we want to, uh, you know, find which model performs well in a particular case. So in that situation, what we do is we train both of these models with uh, this particular data set. And we try to find the loss value for each of these model. Which model has uh, the lower loss value that model will make better prediction. Okay, so low loss value means there is no distance between the estimated value and the true value or no, there is no difference between the estimated value and the true value. So the loss function should be less for a model for it to perform better. Okay, so this is where loss function can be uh, helpful for us and also parameters uh, are better so to find which parameters are better. So different uh, models are different parameters and even you can take a model like logistic regression and you can change the parameters. So changing the parameters will change the prediction made by the model. Okay. And we need to find which parameters are best suited for a particular data set. Again, what you can do is you can uh, take a single model. Let's say that we can take a logistic regression model and we can uh, take two parameter values. So one set of parameter values and the other set of parameters values. And in each case, we can find the loss value and uh, the model or the case in which the parameters uh, are better, in that case, the loss value will be very less. So these are the important usefulness for loss function where we can uh, use this particular loss value to determine which model performs better and which parameters are suited for a particular data set. Okay. So this is the formula for loss function yi minus uh, yi whole square and all these should be some, uh, you know, we need to summation all these values and divided by n. Okay. So this is called as uh, the square mean error. So what we are doing here is yi means the, uh, the true value, true value or the actual value and yi cap is the estimated value or predicted value. So we need to find the difference between these two values in all the cases. Let's say that we have 100 data points and we need to find or we need to predict the values for our, all these 100 data points and each of these data points will have some error. Okay, so all the predicted values will have some error. So we need to find all those errors and divided by n. In this case, n is nothing but 100, the number of data points that we are taking. Okay, so this is the formula for loss function. And there are different types of loss function and important types are cross entropy loss, squared error loss and KL divergence. Okay, so these are the main uh, loss function types. And in a later point of time, we will be discussing about these uh, three things in a detailed way. But in this video, let's try to understand more about this loss function or how we can calculate this. So uh, let's say that we have 
an x axis and a y axis and we are taking some data. So this is the data set that we have and we have plotted uh, the values for x axis and y axis. Okay. So now we need to find a model or a curve which can fit this, uh, you know, data set. So it is not possible to draw a line or curve which can pass through all the data points. So we can just, uh, you know, uh, draw a curve like this that can, you know, almost pass through all the points. So this is the trend that we are seeing in this particular uh, line. So the value doesn't increase much. So when x value increases, the y value doesn't increase much in the first case. So it is almost, uh, you know, uh, the same. And after a certain point, the y value increases as the uh, x value increases. So this is the trend that we are getting for this particular uh, data set. So this is how the equation of this particular line may look like. So this is not the exact equation. I'm just giving you an example of how uh, the equation will be for a line like this or a curve like this. So this is an example for a degree, th degree 3 polynomial. As you can see here, we have x cube, x, uh, x square and x. Okay. So degree 4 polynomial will have uh, values as uh, x power 4, x power 3, x power 2 and x and a constant. Okay. So this is an example of a degree 3 polynomial and this particular values are coefficients. So the values before x cube, x square and x. So these values are coefficient values or you can also call these as uh, the parameters of the model. Okay. So now uh, this is the model that we have found for this particular data point. And now what we are going to do is, let's say that there are three people and we ask this three people to uh, look at this particular data. So we have this particular uh, blue circles as the data. So what we are going to do is we are going to ask them to look at this data and to calculate and uh, find a curve which can better fit this particular data set. Okay. So we know that the proper curve looks like this, but those three people doesn't know this. Let's see, let's see what can be the result of this particular experiment. Let's say that the first person finds the equation to be uh, this 0 0.000 so on 15 or 15 x cube plus 0 0.0042 x square and so on. So this is the equation of the curve given by this particular person. And we know that the equation for this particular curve is this, okay. And the equation given by the second person is this, okay. So y2, so let y1 be the equation given by this particular person and y2 be the uh, equation given by the second person and y3 is the equation given by third person, okay. So let's say that they have used some methods to find this or uh, to determine this equation. And we know that the actual equation is this. Now what we can do is find uh, y1 value, y2 value and y3 value. So this is the x value. And when you plug the values of x in this particular equation, let's say that we get this y value. Okay. So this is the x value. And for this particular x value, we get this y value. So this is not exact number. So I'm just giving you an example. So I'm sure that if you plug the values of x in this particular equation, you won't get this value. So I'm just using this as a demonstration purpose. Let's understand this as uh, if we put the x values here, we get the y value as this. Okay. So we get this particular y value from this particular equation. Now we have y1, y2 and y3. When you put all those x values in this equation y1, you will get all these values like this. And for y2, this is the second equation and this is the values we get. And similarly, we have y3 and the equation of y3 is this third equation. Okay. Now we need to find out of these three models, which models perform better. Okay. So this equation is nothing but the equation of a curve. You can call a curve as a model. Okay. So what I'm going to do is find the loss function for all these three models. Now let's try to find the loss function for these models. So we know that the formula for loss function is this where we try to find the difference between the true value which is yi and uh, the predicted value which is yi cap. So we uh, then take the square of all these values individually. And then we do a summation on this and then divided by uh, the total number of values. Okay. So in this case, we totally have five values. So five X values and the corresponding Y value, Y1, Y2 value and etc. Okay. So first of all, let's try to find the loss value for Y1. So this is how you can calculate this. So we need to find the difference and square it and sum it overall. So the Y value, which is the true value is 0 0.35 and the value predicted by our model, the Y1 model is 0 0.38. So we need to find the difference between 0 0.35 and 0 0.38. We are uh, squaring it because we need to neglect uh, the sign, sign conventions. So in this case, the error value is negative. 
So, but in the second case, the error value is positive. If you don't square the values and submit uh, without uh, squaring it, so the positive error and the negative errors will cancel. So we don't want that. So we square the values in order to neglect that positive error and the negative error. Both positive error is also an error, negative error is also an error. So we need to take in take both into consideration. So uh, we need to square these values. So when you square the values, those signs will go away. The negative signs will go away and that is the reason. So here the true value is y and the predicted value is y1. Okay, so 0 0.35, which is the first value, first true value and the first predicted value is 0 0.38. So we are uh, finding the difference between them and squaring them. So the second true value is 0 0.48 and the predicted value is 0 0.45. Similarly, we are subtracting 0 0.55 and 0 0.59 and then the difference between 0 0.63 and 65, which we have done here and 72 and 75. Okay, so once we square all these values individually, we need to add all these values. So this is called as the summation part. And then we need to divide that particular value by n. So n is nothing but the total number of values. And in this case, the number of values we are taking is 5, right? So I'm dividing it by 5. And the last value you will get will be 0 0.173 in this particular case. So this is the last value for the model uh, y1. Okay, so we know that uh, there are three people and the uh, equation given by the first person is this, which is y1 is equal to this, so on. And uh, the loss function for this particular first model is uh, 0.173. As I have already told you, low loss value means high accuracy. So we want our loss value to be as close to zero. So if the loss value is zero, that means the true value and the predicted value are the same. That means our model has 100 percentage accuracy, but it won't be the case always. So you may get a loss value as uh, 1.5 or you may get a loss value as 2.3 or 3.3. So those loss values are very high and that means our model is not performing well. So loss function closer to zero means our model is performing well. And in this case, we get a loss value of about 0.173. Okay. So we want a loss value to be as close as to zero. So in machine learning, when we train our machine learning models, we try to uh, minimize this loss value. And this is how optimization uh, techniques also work. So the several optimization techniques try to uh, reduce this uh, loss value based on the data set that we have. And uh, and it is, it is the basic principle on which works. A model should have uh, a minimum loss value so that it can make better prediction and it trains based on that particular parameter, okay? So that is all about loss function. And now we can come to the first part which we have discussed before as we know that loss function measures how far an estimated value is from its true value. Now, if you read this definition again, you will get a better understanding as we have seen an example, okay? So we have discussed how we can find this, uh, you know, distance or difference between the estimated value and the true value using this particular formula. And based on this, we can find which model performs better. So what you can do is, use uh, the two models so we add three models and i have shown you how we can find uh, the loss value for this particular first model and similarly you can uh, find the loss values of the second model and the third model and find which model has a very low loss value okay so that loss uh, or that particular uh, model will be the best suited one and in this case all the three models are similar models so all these three models are uh, degree 3 polynomials. So in this case, we are just changing the parameters. So that's why I have mentioned that it is helpful to determine which model performs well or which parameters are better. So in this case, we are just using a single model, which is a third degree polynomial, but we are taking different parameters values and we can find which uh, parameters values are best suited for this particular example. Okay. So this is how loss function works and how you can find the loss function. And these are some uh, important types of loss function, which includes cross entropy loss, squared error loss and KL divergence loss. So squared error loss is nothing but the one which we have discussed. So finding the difference and uh, squaring it and then dividing it by the average value. Okay. So this is the example of uh, squared error loss. So similarly, we have cross entropy loss and KL divergence loss, and we will be discussing Discussing about these two topics in a later time as these two are more uh, advanced topics okay so that's it about loss function and i hope you have understood all the things covered in this particular video and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching